everybody, my name is Katie Sauter. Still wedding planning, still YouTubing, still rocking that engineering nine to five that we do not talk about here. And we're not in my normal space today. You might have noticed we're also not alone. This is Emily Duncan. She's the owner of Studio Tales and Dolce Art, right? Dolce Art Studios. Yeah. And Dolce Art Studios. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to paint in her studio today while I ask her some questions. So we're going to start like pretty basic and then get more and more interesting, a little more spicy, and uh, see how it goes. So stay tuned, it should be fun. And we're also going to paint today. We've chosen to paint my two cats. By the end, we'll find out if I can paint even half as good as Emily. <laughs> so, <laughs> ultimately, we'll have fun. <laughs> ultimately, we'll just have some fun. <laughs> and then you'll like, see our results. <laughs> how you became a wedding painter. You know, it's fun to say that. So when I was in high school, I actually wanted to be a wedding planner. Oh, really? Um, I did, but that is too much stress for me. I actually really enjoy painting much more. Um, and it doesn't, it's not stressful at all when I'm there, even though I paint a painting within, you know, five or six hours. Um, basically, I started out just, um, I, I went to college at UNCG uh, in Greensboro, and I graduated with a concentration in sculpture and painting. And then I did a couple worship paintings, and that was basically I would paint during church, and by the end of service or by the end of worship, the painting would be complete. And from there, my love of weddings, I was like, well, why can't I do this with weddings? And I actually saw somebody doing it from Canada back in 2019, and that's when I was like, yes, this is what I'm doing. And I oh, love it. So cool. Yeah. I love that. So you just like, you have been thinking about weddings for some time then. Yes. That's, that's really cool. I love the wedding space, obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a happy place to be. Right. If we want to go more into the spicy. I'm just like, I don't know. I'm open to anything. You're already way ahead of me. <laughs> oh, you're... <laughs> What if I don't finish today? <laughs> you can take it home with you. <laughs> oh, you can take your homework home. I can take my homework home. <laughs> I'm in school again. Can you uh, tell me what is one of your like favorite moments from wedding painting? Favorite moments? Yeah. Wow, that's hard. Can you do a different one first? That's a hard one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's cheating. Favorite. <laughs> that's <laughs> cheating. Here, let me paint on your canvas. <laughs> You might help it. <laughs> you oh, my goodness. Man, I don't know. So there's so many tender moments in weddings. That's why it's so hard. And it's so weird because, like, I feel like, and you probably experienced this too, like, you really learn so much about your bride and groom and, like, before the wedding, but then at the wedding, like, seeing their love and, like, hearing their vows and, like, private vows. Wow. Well, you know what? There was a really pretty union like a union candle like during the ceremony they'll do like a unity yeah 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 it's, it's, okay. it's a unity candle okay okay yeah so it wasn't a unity candle but instead they had a little girl right and so they did a pb and j and they put they each they all did the peanut butter and jelly on the sandwich and put it together and it was like the line was because once you put a pb and j together it can't be separated and it was the little girl's favorite snack and so in the portrait we ended up painting her with her little pb and j and their first kiss so stuff like that like and then there was another you know there are so many moments like that that it's really hard to pick like one moment that oh yeah yeah. So cute. That was probably my favorite, like, unity. Did you get to see how the little girl reacted to that? Oh my gosh, yeah. She was so cute. And she did so well. Like, it's like, oh, She did so great. But she was younger, too. Wait, yeah, you said four? Um, oh I actually don't know how old she was. I'm picturing four for some reason. Yeah, she probably was about three or four is what I'm thinking. Aww. She might have been older. Sorry, it was so long ago. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, how long have you been doing this? Um, so I started in... I, I practiced my first ones in 2019, but I didn't go... I might have done my first wedding in 2019, but it was the end of 2019, and then 2020 hit, right? Yeah. Everything shuts down, and then I restarted after my little boy was born in 2021. 
So we talked a lot about me and my idea of wedding planning, but what brought you to wedding planning? Well, I've been planning events since like middle school. Like in middle school, I planned a uh, recycled fiction show, or at least I helped. I mean, it was like middle school. So um, that's on your resume, right? I'm just gonna <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so cool. That sounds so cool. I, like my teachers did probably most of the work. I just remember helping to like organize it. And yeah. And yeah. like help advertise. Right. So I wasn't like a coordinator. I was 12. Um, <laughs> that sounds cool though. I, I like started to really love planning events. Not right. And right. that was for the art club in uh, middle school. And then oh, I went to high school and they were like, we don't have an art club. And I was like, well, I have to start an art club. Um, obviously. So I did. I started an art club at my high school. I'm a hero. Um, so I was like, I was able to put that on my resume when I was applying yeah. to college. I was like, started an art club. That I was like, that's so cool. Penn State's gonna think I'm cool. Um, I'm cool? <laughs> Everyone should think she's cool. I'm just saying. Uh, no, but that's so cool. Because like, I mean, art club got me through high school. I did not enjoy high school. So like, if we didn't have an art club, I probably wouldn't be an artist today. Well, it was and my favorite one. Shout out to my art teachers. They were awesome. Aww. Awesome. That's so wonderful. I, uh, yeah, because art got me through a lot of um, high school and undergrad. And then when I went on to get my, uh, my PhD in material science and engineering, which I haven't mentioned yet on my channel, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> It does not matter. I mean, like, I'm proud of what I've done, mm -hmm. but I also, like, don't think it's relevant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah. It's not like I'm throwing them around, like, I'm doctor. Like, no, that's that's dumb. We don't need to be bragging. Dr. Planner. <laughs> Dr. <Doctor, laughs> Dr. Planner. Oh my god. That's your superhero name now. Okay. What's that superhero do? <laughs> <laughs> Make <laughs> art clubs. <laughs> I mean, just. I don't know. It just flies around. Your school now has an art club. Your school now has an art club. Now, this university doesn't have an art club? Dare you! Oh, gosh. <laughs> I uh definitely not. <laughs> if I had a superpower, if I had a superpower, it'd probably be I mean teleportation. Oh yeah. Yes. That way we wouldn't even need to get hotels. Oh. It could just be like, all right, we're going to go to Finland. Can you teleport other people? Yeah. Yeah. And your clothes and everything and like I don't. I do not want the time traveler's wife situation. <laughs> okay. Which, if you've not read the book, it's not a spoiler. But when he time travels, he ends up totally naked. So, um, Jax. that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no go for me. Um, I would not want to travel if it meant being totally naked. You could pick where you go and find a good closet. Yeah, there's one that has like the best outfits in it. Let's start like buying up random sheds hit across the world. <laughs> My superpower because I'm a mom has to be that I would be octomom off and have a million legs or arms. Arms, not legs, not legs, arms. Cause then I can do a bunch of things at once. I can hold my child, rock baby, and paint. Oh, I wow. actually am stealing that from a friend, so. Yeah, that makes Such sense. a good idea. It's a good idea. So what's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you at a wedding? So I have like a strange moment that's happened. So I was put next to the caters, which was awesome. It was time for me to like take some photos. So I went out during the golden hour to go take some photos, left my eagle there, and I came back and the couple was still out taking their golden hour photos and someone cut their cake. What? <laughs> Wait, someone cut their No! They cut their cake. Now this would, you know, it is a it is a big deal. But they had two cakes. Okay. Right? And the caterers actually ran out of food, and so some people didn't get food. Have you ever had a client that you didn't like? Didn't like. 
Does this include like all clients of all time? Yes. Yeah, I had one. Okay. It was a pet portrait. Oh, it was a pet portrait. It was a pet portrait. Okay, what what did you not um, like about them? It was only it was only because so all all if you don't like the way your pet portrait looks like, I will redraw it, I will repaint it until you are you are fully you like it. I I don't know how how I didn't like the way they I can take constructive criticism. Yeah. I was painting them a bunny for Easter and the way they described the bunny looking to give me constructive criticism was not okay. nice. I can say that like I say to my children. It was not kind. Oh, um, they, well, I don't, let me cut it out if they cut this out if it doesn't sound fine with wings at you. Yeah. They said that the rabbit looked like it had Down syndrome. Oh, <gasps> yeah. No. Did not like it. Did not like that they said that. I was very upset. What? Um, and that's not even a good way to tell me how to fix it. Like, okay, I think the rabbit looks fine, but okay. <laughs> That's like, oh, it, it was oh, wrong on all so sorts of levels. Ah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, ableist? Oh, it was so wrong. It was, and, like, yeah. So that's why I don't know if I even want that in there as a thing to say, to talk about, because it, it irks oh, me to even say it out loud. That's shocking. I was so upset when I read that. I closed out my phone, and I did not look at their message for, like, quite a few days. Like, I just kind of was like, I don't even know how to approach this at all. You know, like, I don't even know what they would want. Like, what does that even, like, it, it was frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Cause that's like- And icky and gross and so, yes. Oh. I have had- What did you do? Um, do you remember? The only thing I knew to do, because I don't actually know why they said what they said, was to regrid it, so put the grids back on it, and not redraw it, but rework it. And it was a pencil drawing, so I went back in and I kind of like tried to just match up the lines and see yeah. where lines laid and what proportionally was off because I didn't want to ask them. I, at that point I was like, well, I'm just going to take it upon myself as an artist to... What do your parents think about hiring a wedding planner? Well, it came with a glowing recommendation for me. Did you know? So this is like a fun fact. So like the average, and this was something I saw on The Knot, but the average amount of time that a couple spends planning a wedding without a wedding planner is 300 hours. Oh gosh. So it's like, imagine your hourly rates and now, like, how much money is that really to you? Right. That time. So I know not everyone can afford it, but to have someone else step in, yeah, it's it's a huge amount of time. Oh, totally. Because, like, I do all of the research and a lot of, like, the, the mood board planning and design and... I help source things and talk to vendors, and it's like, I vet people. How'd you meet your fiance? Oh yeah, I met, um, I met Tony, so it was 2021 in May, so a lot of people were still wearing masks, and it was like this mm. dreary, rainy Chicago day, mm -hmm. and um, it's cold in May in Chicago. Oh gosh. And um, so we were both postdocs at Argonne National Lab. Mm -hmm. um, and we, it was my first week at Argonne. And I had just kind of was like, I need friends. Mm -hmm. Obviously I need friends. And there was a postdoc society and I said, okay, sounds like a way to make friends. And so what I did was I uh, <laughs> attended and I immediately was like, hey guys, Anyone want to go for beers tonight? And immediately, like, three other guys were like, heck yeah, we want to get beer. Tony was one of the few on the call that his photo wasn't there. It was just a TM, which are his initials. And the two other guys did not. Uh, I'm sitting there and I've got like this leopard mask on. And like, awesome. <laughs> And then I'm like looking over at this guy and we're standing there really awkwardly. We're both clearly waiting, but didn't say hi. Oh, he, so he you found out his... later. No, no, no. So like, like it, like while we're standing there at the restaurant, like he recognizes me, but doesn't come to say hi. And so I had to approach him 
Oh, yeah. Like occasional eye contact. Right, right, right. And I'm just, I, I was like, that was so Tony. <laughs> he's like, he's friendly, he loves being around right, people. Right, right. But he's not one to speak first. I get that. I get that. Okay, so we finished. That definitely took the whole 15 minute length of this video for sure, 100%. Uh, <laughs> we only paid it for 15 minutes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Okay, <laughs> as so we'll show. And, um. Oh my goodness, look at those yeah. eyes. That's good. It really captures the essence of my cat. We even got like the the dirty hand. Oh yeah, that I I've done it because you do so such a good job. And honestly, this you gave me some really good direction. This really oh, really helps. So if you want to check out Emily and her work, uh, possibly hire her. I'll link down uh, all of her handles and her website down below. You should check it out. If you are in North Carolina area. Uh, classes in July with the amazing Emily and um, yeah, check it out. Um, I'll give you the links below. Yeah, I should have told you that before. <laughs> so I <didn't> realize <laughs> <it's scary. laughs> so it is. Um, and then I also have freebies. One free planning timeline that I created uh, for because I was frustrated that other planners their timelines were incomplete. Um, so it tells you when to buy your cake topper. And then also uh, it comes with it's a two for one. So it also comes with a wedding party mini guide for you and your bridesmaids, groomsmen, maid of honor, honor squad celebration group, whatever you want to call them. So that's all linked down below. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this one where I try bitchending. Sort of. Maybe it's not great. You know, I do okay. This area has uh, some rocket drama. And uh, you can check it out. Some tasty drama. Tasty drama. Yep. <laughs> so, so fun. So don't forget to smooch that like button and put a ring on that subscribe, but keep it PG for me, okay?